Well, in my notes, brethren, that I have from uh, the times that the topic of the tribe of, tribes of Israel became so actual, which was last last century, it says that Asher is Belgium and Luxembourg. Now, I don't have any details on Luxembourg. You know, Luxembourg is a small nation, but extremely prosperous. And therefore, of course, from that physical prosperity, we can see that they are... Uh, you know, part of the, obviously, part of the uh, blessings that came to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plus, as far as I remember, Luxembourg speaks French, and as you know, Belgium does part of Belgium. Some of them speak French, French some kind of French. The others speak Dutch. But anyway, you have, uh, we have about Belgium far more, you know, information than about the Luxembourg. But again, the prosperity of Luxembourg does tell us something. In any way, when it comes to Belgium, it's far more substantial. As you know, in Genesis 49, Jacob told Asher that his situation would be in the last days. That's verse 1. And in verse 20, here is the prophetic words that Jacob used, you know, about the situation of Asher in the last days. He says, Genesis 49, 20, Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Now, his bread shall be fat. Also, you know, the, fat, fat, the, the word fat can be used as oil. His bread shall be oil. Now, this could be translated also, these royal dainties could be also translated as royal dignities. If you take a look at Young's Concordance, it'll tell you royal delights. Royal delights. And during Solomon's time, if you go and read First Kings, again, I'll mostly make reference to the Bible for the sake of time. And you can always check it yourself. In 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 17, during Solomon's time, each of the 12 tribes in turn provided the royal provisions for one month each year. And that's how each tribe would be, you know, supporting the royal family, the Israelite royal family, the throne of David, for one year. That was established in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 7. So we have, of course, the modern descendants of Asher, in these last days, their bread shall be fat or oil, and they Asher shall lead royal delights. Now, diamonds certainly delight kings, and the diamond cutting industry at Antwerp, which is one of the Belgian cities, draws much of its supply from the Congo. When drew, well, this is of course Collier's Encyclopedia, Volume Four, from the last century, and Congo was Belgian colony. So they drew much of their supplies from Congo. I'm quoting from that. Actually, this is Encyclopedia Americana, Volume 3 as well, page 496, which makes Belgium the world's leading exporter of industrial diamonds. Antwerp has surpassed Amsterdam as the greatest center of the diamond cutting industry. Antwerp firms employ about half of the world's diamond cutters and produce almost 60% of the world's finished diamonds. This is called the Encyclopedia. So this tells us something about Belgium. You might remember, as we sp uh, when we also touched upon the tribe of Levi, you might remember that we also mentioned that the tribe of Levi obviously is present, yes, in modern Wales and also in Belgium. So you see, in Belgium we have we have the dominant is the tribe of Asher, but also we can see also the presence in the uh, in that nation of the tribe of Levi. So, a great concentration of the Levites there as well. Now, again, as I told you, in some nations you have, usually in all these Israelitish nations, you will have other tribes, but there is one dominant tribe. Now, obviously, these Asher would be present somewhere in the Dutch nation as well, even though the Dutch nation is dominated by Zebulun. Why? Well, you see, in South Africa, the Dutch and Belgians settled in South Africa as Boers, Afrikaners, or Dutch. Now, Belgians, as you know, are part of Flemish or Dutch and part of Walloons or French. That's the, their nationality. Now, here in South Africa, they came to possess many royal delights like gold, silver, platinum, and yes, more diamonds. And full credit is due, you know, about that information to one man called Steve Collins. He provided the insight con connecting Usher and his prophecy with South Africa. Now, uh, Stephen Collins has written four excellent books, brethren, on the uh, identity of Israel. Uh, I think he does agree with traditionally with all the identities that we know. Perhaps he may be having one or two errors in some things. But overall, 
he has written some excellent books about the identity of Israel and the uh, kingdom of Israel being united under King David and Solomon and their allies, the Phoenicians and the city of Tyre. And therefore, perhaps, you know, one of these days in our studies, we might be able to go through some of the portions, excerpts from Stephen Collins' books, because it's written in very simple, simply to understand English. But, of, but if some of you would love to obtain those books, you can obtain them through, you know, through, through Amazon, I think, if you have means to do that. You'll find those informations quite interesting. That information is interesting because it will help you understand the Bible history much better. Now, God willing, we'll be able, hopefully, to go through all the uh, dynasties, both of the house of Judah and of the house of Israel. And hopefully, we'll be able to go through the uh, history of Israel from what we can find in Chronicles and Kings. Uh, I've got material compiled about that as well. As you see, plenty of materials. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even know which topic to touch, touch upon first. We have got plenty of things we can analyze, and we will, God willing. Hopefully, he'll give us enough time in this lifetime to do that. Now, diamonds, again, as I said, are delight of kings. And this connection with South Africa, we can credit Steve Collins, who is still alive. And uh, with some health troubles, but hopefully God, will, hopefully God will keep him still alive to perhaps provide to us some more things. Now, there is something else about Belgium. I heard about Belgium. Everything is so nice and packaged well and plenty of chocolates and everything is full of some dainties. So, Belgian lace, crystal, tapestry, even the alcoholic drinks are renowned and certainly fit for royalty. But, however, we have that Asher's bread shall be fat also. What does that mean? Well, bread, you know. Agriculture, you see, agricultural yields are generally high. About five metric tons of wheat per hectare. Can you imagine in a small country like that? Because of the high productivity, Belgians were able to produce two million metric tons of grain annually in the mid-70s, while using only about half of the arable land. Now that tells you something. That's mid-70s. Now you can imagine with this technological advancement, how much the Belgian economy is doing, how is it doing now? Of the total grain output, I'm reading this, of course, from the last century information, but the last century is also the last days, including our century. Of the last grain output, about half is wheat, one third is barley, and most of the rest is oats and rye. Also, despite the limited supply of arable land, they've got about 12% of arable land. South Africa, this is, of course, again, from last century quote, is virtually self-sufficient in foodstuffs. South Africa, in the time when it was run by, of course, by the uh, by other administration. Also, Belgians claim credit for the invention of the French fry, by the way. Did you know that? French fry. That was information from Culture Gram from 1976. Now we know fish and chips. We know who owns fish and chips. But now we know that the French fry is not, not from France. You know, it's obviously from Belgium. Now, what about South Africa? South Africa in the last century, brethren, produced most of the world's platinum, 80%, manganese, 80%, vandanium, and between 40 or 50% of the world's uranium. It was all, according to the Christian World Report from 1989, it was reported by Alan Brownfeld in an article, you know, that's from 1989. Then, as you know, the administration changed and South Africa today, I would say, is a very sad place to live. As soon as the, sadly, black population got over and the black administration, totally black administration, took over the country, sadly, the country became something else. Now, as you know, Moses also prophesied about each tribe and so Asher is not the exception. Deuteronomy 33, verse 24 and 25, here is Moses' prophecy. Let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren and let him dip his foot in oil. Oh. Now, you know, what can this refer to? You need to understand that one of the fertile valleys in Asher's territory in the promised land is actually called the Valley of the Olive. And the territory of Asher has always been known for its vast oil groves. And even today, most of the olive oil produced in the state of Israel, brethren, comes from Asher's territory. And then Moses adds, Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, 
so shall thy strength be. So this is again prophecy for the end times, for our times. And truly, Brethren Asher has dipped his foot in oil because Belgium has begun to share in the exploitation of petroleum deposits under the floor of the North Sea. This is, of course, the uh, data, the, uh, the fact from the last century. So they began in the last century. Since 1951, oil storage facilities have been built in Antwerp Harbor and Petrofina, the principal Belgian distributor or of refined oil products, as well as foreign oil companies, has invested heavily in the oil refining complex in Antwerp. Now, oil from coal plants by, built by the National Energy Corporation will eventually provide about 60% of South Africa's fuel oil requirements. So even the South Africa, when it was under different administration, was there following in those wonderful blessings. Now, Belgium is blessed with children because Belgium is one of the world's most densely populated nations with an average population density of 323 persons per square kilometer or 835 per square mile. The population in 1979, for example, was estimated at 9,842,000. You'll, you'll learn that from Academic American Encyclopedia. But if you, of course, Google out, we now live in different age. As of this year, as of August last year, Last month, August 2020, the Belgian population stands at 11,589,623 people. How precise, even to the person. <laughs> so you see, it has risen, the population has risen in such a small country. And most clearly, Moses was worried about Asher not being accepted by his brothers. And so he said, let him be acceptable to his brethren. Now, what can this mean? If you remember the last century and the apartheid in South Africa, of all the first world, and South Africa was the first world country, of all the first world Western democracies, South Africa used to be criticized most. And I remember when I was much younger, I was with horror, I was reading about, you know, apartheid in South Africa and uh, the way how the black population was treated. Nowadays, it seems that things have reversed. Nowadays, it seems that the black population is terrorizing the white population, and not only in South Africa. In 1961, the United Union of South Africa, brethren, withdrew from the Commonwealth of Nations due to opposition among that body to apartheid policies, and the Republic was declared. Now, something happened. There was a Stephen Biko. He, you know, he died in police custody in 1977, which aroused international protests. And the United Nations repeatedly condemned apartheid, and many multinational organizations were pressured to withdraw from South Africa. Now, also, Belgian Congo was, as well, a source of criticism. And if you know of anything that you know, all the horrible crimes committed by the Belgians in Congo against the natives, you would understand why. Uh, it's being termed today as genocide. And the uh, Belgian king, Leopold, is the one who is accused of committing such a horrible genocide in Congo. Now, Belgium's shoes, shoes are mentioned, foundational supports economically, are iron and brass. Well, you see, Belgium's principal manufacturers are iron and steel, and the leading products of the metallurgical industry are iron and steel. And in 1975, for example, Belgium ranked fifth in Europe in this industry. Of course, brass is, you know, two parts copper and one part zinc. And Belgium prod produced uh, thousands of metric tons of zinc in 1974 and was Europe's second largest zinc producer and the world's sixth largest. You know, it's a small nation and yet, you see, how its economy ranks so high. The zinc industry, of course, attracted to Belgium other non-ferrous non metal industries, and these produce now more metals like cobalt, cadmium, tin, lead, and most important, copper. Belgium, of course, is a big exporter of uh, copper. It exports thousands of metric tons of copper and zinc since 1974. Now, in Genesis 30, verse 13, we'll find his mother Leah. Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed, and she called his name Asher, which actually means happy, as plain as that. And, you know, Belgium 
and once upon the time South Africa, being rich nations, they had many reasons to be happy. Belgians today have many reasons to be happy. As far as the white population in South Africa, it doesn't have many reasons to be very happy, but they, you know, they're still well off, nevertheless, still living there. But now they're pretty much constantly under the threat from, from you know, the black, black communities. So Belgium has many reasons to be happy. Sadly, South Africa doesn't. Well, brethren, now I hope with this, we have now established who the modern usher is. Again, Belgium does have, as I said, they do have, remember, also a big influx of influence of the tribe of Levi. Obviously, these Dutch-speaking people, probably some of them have the origin of Zabulon. But the uh, tribe which does dominate in Belgium today is the tribe of Asher. And to some of you, I think this is nothing new, but it confirms what you have already understood about the Bible prophecy.